Hi, and welcome back to the Billy Meyer Books channel. Last week, I was able to spend some time with Michael Horn. Michael is the American media representative for Billy Meyer and has been researching the case for more than 40 years. Not only was Michael generous with his time, but he also showed me some new UFO photographs that I've never seen before. These photographs depict Ascot's ship along with the then still secret F-117 stealth fighter and were taken in 1981. And these photographs were not taken by Billy Meyer. They were taken by Wendell Stevens. Stay tuned for an interview with Michael Horn and the latest UFO photographs from the Billy Meyer case. Michael, great to see you. Thanks, Mike. It's, it's great to be speaking with you and conducting this conversation. Absolutely, for sure. Well, you know, I know how busy you are and how many things you got going and your recent posts on your, on your blog and everything. So thank you for taking time uh, to come by to the Billy Meyer Books channel. We really appreciate uh, having some of your insight and some of your time. It's, it's my pleasure, totally. And I'm looking forward to this kind of a discussion actually that uh, you know people get to know a little more about this network that you're involved in and all the Meyer material and I'm part of it. Thank you. Sure, sure. So I uh, guess let's start from the beginning. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you know how you came to find the Meyer material? What motivated you to become public with it? And how has it changed over time? Well, uh, my introduction, if you will, was uh, by walking into a bookstore in Los Angeles called the Bodhi Tree and having a uh, in-my-face view of the first uh, photo book, which was, of course, incredible, 1979, September. That's when I, I saw the book and uh, purchased it on the spot. Spent several months just reading and rereading because, of, as you know, of course, it was limited in terms of the information relative to what we have now, courtesy also to you and the guys at Steelmark. But what we had was in that book from, uh, you know, the late Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Stevens and me and Gridelis, we had the introduction to Billy Meyer's stunningly clear UFO photos, information on the analysis, other physical evidence. It was mind blowing, but it would still be a number of years before I would get what I called the contact reports or at the time contact notes and further develop my familiarity with the information. So your information, your contact with the Billy Meyer case started in 1979? Yeah, through that exposure to the first book. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a long time ago. That's You've been doing this a long time. It was great. I mean, that was... I can see myself walking into that book bookstore and where the book was on the shelf and everything. That particular day is just firmly in, in, embedded, engraved upon my memory. So, how has um, your involvement, you know, changed over time? You know, as far as getting the information out and your blog. And oh, by the way, just for our viewers, so that in case they don't know. What are your contact information as far as the website and where they can purchase books? Can you give us that information? Oh, yes, sure. Um, the bookstore is located on the original site, which you guys helped me start in about 2002. And that's called theyfly.com. I was remembering the old name. Theyfly.com. And my most active site is the blog, theyflyblog.com. And that's active. Uh, updated all sometimes every day at least four times a week with all the new information and the, the link to the bookstore as well okay great thanks for that that way if people are interested they could visit and, and also purchase some of billy's books um so what motivated you i mean you, you you come into contact with billy's books and you start reading it what motivated you to become public you know as a public figure figure like you are today <laughs> Actually, it's funny you ask that. I mean, I was the, I had met a guy named Randy Winters, Randolph Winters, in Los Angeles in 1986. 
and uh, you know, we somehow coincidentally came together. He had been representing the Meyer material. I was doing mainly my music at that time, and I was in the period where I was doing my new age comedy music, uh, new age blues, leave your body here with me, things like that, <laughs> spaceship on the waters. Um, so I was Randy's opening act, but we both had read the 1800 pages. He had already been to Switzerland by that time. I was in the audience for that, and I would always sit there after I'd perform. And he'd come on, and I started to notice that the information he was presenting, the way he was presenting it, was digressing from what was in those contact reports. And it kind of bothered me because I thought, well, he's, he's taking liberties here. He's such a great speaker. Why does he need to take liberties with this? So, um, I asked him if he would mind if I was doing presentations myself. He said, not a problem. He gave me a carousel of slides. And then um, one thing led to another. In 1987, I began doing my first presentations. And that was the actual beginning. So let's get a little bit into the the, the proof, the, the, the evidence that, that Billy Myers put forth over many, many years that, that you have been sort of the champion and the lead person, really, for, for the English-speaking world on, on bringing this. If you could summarize for us, what would be the two best, the two best proofs, uh, you know, evidence or proofs of Billy Myers' context? That in, your, in, in your total years of experience of research and everything, what are the two best? Well, I think to make it uh, most familiar to people, the two categories would be the UFO photos, films, and video, and then what I consider the even higher standard of proof, the prophetically accurate scientific, environmental, geopolitical, economic, and medical information that Meyer verifiably published prior to official discovery by years and often decades. And that is something that we began to accumulate uh, because I started to notice uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself, so let's go back to the photograph again. It gets so exciting to talk about this. Um, there were original uh, investigative efforts to determine the authenticity or lack thereof of the photographic and other physical evidence. So photo analysis was done in the late 1970s, as was the analysis of sounds and metal samples, etc. Those analyses still hold today. Using the technology of the day, they found that it would have been impossible for Billy Meyer to have hoaxed his photographs. They thoroughly examined, looked for models and miniatures and all. This, remember, is pre-digital era. So that's a whole body of you know, analyses and scientific evaluation that stands. There have been a couple other independent analyses and, and uh, authentications by, um, uh, let's see, Chris Locke and Francisco Bilate. But one of the things that I uh, was fortunate enough to participate in in 2017, I laugh about it because it was a rather rigorous kind of a situation. I'll, I'll explain it. I was called in, in the morning in January in 2017, 8.30 in the morning, never forget, by an older rough sounding guy who identified himself as Joe, didn't say what he did, didn't give a last name, only said that he was an investigator, wanted to know if I would speak about the Meyer material because he found me in connection. I said, yes, he double checked and you sure. I said, yeah, why? He says, because I think it's, it's a bunch of nonsense. I said, well, let's talk about it. So for three months, every Saturday morning without fail, 8.30 in the morning, the phone rings, it's Joe, and it quickly moves from a conversation into literally an interrogation. Three months, which I just respected so much because I knew I was talking to somebody who was top level. There, he was at the top of his game, whatever it was. And so he would ask questions and we would go through this. Okay, he disappears. At the end of March, he stops calling. Suddenly he reappears in August of 2017. Hi, willing to talk to me? It's Joe. I said, you know who it is. Of course I'll talk to you. What's up? He said, well, I'm going to tell you who I am, and I'm going to tell you about your Billy Meyer case. I said, go ahead. He said, well, 
I am the former top investigator, supervisor for the USAF OSI, that's Office of Special Investigation, and the Department of Defense. So, oh, we didn't deal with UFOs. I retired, and since then, I happened to come upon this information. As you know, I'm quite skeptical. And I spent, in, you know, a total now of eight months talking with you, my own five months of investigation, and I will tell you the following. The Billy Meyer UFO contact case is ironclad authentic, and I on any skeptics on your behalf. He took on a skeptic in India, a guy actually who's helped to authenticate the case, and then he went skeptic on us. And he also took on a, a UFO uh, expert, another one of them, named Kevin Randall. He demolished these two guys. And like a following weekend, he called me, because we started to have regular conversations again, very interesting, what he knew, and just a fascinating guy. Hardcore, just tough as nails, didn't pull any punches. And he said to me, look, about the skeptics, <laughs> he said, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not researchers. They're, they're incompetent. He says, I'll tell you what. I told you the case is authentic. I've written an article. You can post it on your site. And anybody, you don't have to be any kind of an investigator. Just think logically, go through these steps, and you will come to the right conclusion. He said, by the way, I went on the Internet after I did all my, you know, investigation on Billy's photos because it's the 1964 evidence. He says, as you've seen the article, it's iron. He said, and then I looked at every video I could find of Billy Meyer, and that's the most honest man I've ever looked at. And he says, I'm telling you this as a man who vetted people who were in the highest of office, aspiring to the high offices, I read body language very well. Billy Meyer, that's an honest man. Okay. Wow. That's amazing from a United States Air Force guy. Oh, my gosh. You know, and his article, because people attack, well, who's this guy, Joe Tiska? I can't find him. I said, you're not going to find Joe unless he wants to be found. But he made it very clear, even though he put his email address in the article. He said, look, you don't have to be an expert follow these steps and to that to this day since then no credible attack on the Meyer case has come forward from skeptics they can't and that's the easy stuff the photographs like yeah. there's a higher standard of proof though could you share with us uh, a few prophecies that are still to come well yeah um, you know for, so folks understand prophecies are most of the time, if they're given as prophecies, because there's two categories here, it's a little distinction. There are those things that are given as prophecies or predictions. Prophecies are warnings of things that will occur if human beings do not change the, the course of, of current events. Predictions are events that are said to occur with 100% certainty, and very often they are things of a cosmic nature that we may not have precipitated, uh, you know, either can't change or we're being warned so specifically, it's a border between prophecy and prediction, like Billy Meyer being the first person to forewarn of what we now call Asteroid Apophis, which he first published in 1981 when he and the play Iron were calling it the Red Meteor. Tons of information about this object, NASA discovers it then later in 2004, and they come up with these dates that the play iron had said were the right dates. It's coming by, but the play iron have said this will hit the Earth in either 2029 or 2036, April 13th of either of those years, if your scientists don't come together and deflect it. Don't try to blow it up. Deflect it. And so this information We've illustrated, I put it in 2029 20, or 2036, right? Yes, so we're, we're coming close, six and plus. So these types of things that need to be known. Now, there are people in the involved with our work that are sending this information out to NASA and other places. The Russians, after this was all published, the Russians came forward, rushing forward with an idea 
to deflect the asteroid. They invited the Chinese and the space, space agency. So we know Meyer is read in, in, at high levels of other governments. <clears throat> but this doesn't have to fulfill if we can focus some of our attention with technology on deflecting this incoming asteroid, which will otherwise hit one of those two dates. Yeah, so that was very powerful. Wow. Now, that's a prophecy people can take. Uh... Go ahead. I'm sorry, I missed that. I was just going to say, that's that's a prophecy someone people can look to the future. 2029 or 2037, that's not far away. Yeah, 2029, 2036, I think Russian doing this. And then there are other things on Earth that are coming uh, that were published back in the 40s. For instance, Meyer's alleged, for those people that still can around it, alleged first extraterrestrial teacher gave many, many predictions. And among them, some that jumped out, in I think 1948, he had said that there would be between 2015 and 2017 strong earthquakes in central Italy that would be the precursors to the eruption of five major volcanoes in Italy, let's see, Mount Etna, Mount Marsili, Mount Vesuvius, uh, Campi Flegri, and uh, there's an, another one, <laughs> Stromboli, did I say? Anyway, I looked online, and these were published in 48. I looked online, and between 2015 and 2017, the earthquakes that occurred in central Italy were the strongest on record. And virtually all of those volcanoes have become active. They, there's been some eruptions too, but the big eruptions are yet to come. There will be things like parts of Italy going into the sea, if this is accurate, when Campi Flegri uh, lets loose, that's going to be massive. The um, Spath also warned about, that's Billy's first teacher, warned about the eruptions of the um, Eiffel fields in northern Europe in northern Germany, that that will become a sea of fire. He was the first to forewarn about the activity uh, that would be noted from all of the undersea volcanoes. That has started. It goes on and on. They are not wrong scientifically. We have over 200 to 250 specific, prophetically accurate examples of Myers, primarily scientific and other uh, prophetic information. Now, it should be said, that body of information when it's given to Billy or published by Billy as prophecies or predictions, that's different from all of the scientific information, uh, astronomical, that Billy published before NASA, where they were conversationally conveying to him. This is what you will find on Mars, that, and tons of stuff on Mars, tons of stuff on black holes, on Saturn, Venus, Pluto, things that verifiably, copyrights verify that Billy Meyer published before we discovered it. Now, unless and until we're ready to uh, deal with that, for our betterment, there's no advantage over anybody. This is for the survival of humankind, because through that material, that's the higher standard of proof. Ah. We recently posted two new articles on the blog. The first one showing that Wendell Stevens in 1981, photographed the then top secret stealth fighter, took nine clear photos, interacting with the UFO of one of the extraterrestrials in this case. Impossible. Yeah, I discovered these in a storage room in Moab, Utah in October of 2020. Yes, 2020, I was asked by Billy through Michael Boytlander to go and check out the archives there, you know, suddenly out of nowhere. And there in the last box, 24 boxes, open it up. Why, there's nine photographs I've never seen before, send them back to Switzerland. Hey, Michael, these are these are not taken by Billy. What? These are Wendell Stevens. So I sent a photograph, I took one of the nine, copy, uh, no, I actually sent that one over to him. And he returned it, that was true, to an expert who had formerly been with Kodak. And I said, please examine the photograph and especially the back of the photo. Well, 
First, he analyzes the front. We have all this for free on the website. This is what's suppressed, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's suppressed. So he says, if I have to testify, you've got two objects there. The first one is stationary. The other one has some movement to it. It's a it goes through the whole thing about why the photo is authentic and there's no manipulation. If I have to testify, that's what I would tell people. There's no manipulation. And he says, then I'll tell you, based on the information from Kodak on the back of the film, this photo was processed in the 1980s. Now, the other shoe that dropped that I am not betting the farm on yet because I, I don't have absolute confirmation. But Christian Frenner told us that Billy was told that unbeknownst to the original investigators who worked with him, the Inverd Elders, Tom Welsh, and Del Toso, Wendell didn't first find out about or meet Billy in 1977 or he met Billy in 1969. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that either. Right, well, here you go, and your audience won't know until they get into this. He was taken by Eskett and Billy on board the craft. Wendell was? Wendell. And he, this is one of the reasons Wendell got railroaded because he wouldn't reveal everything he knew. And they never knew about these photos. Because Wendell passed away, we only found the photos two years ago. And Wendell was, here's the story from Christian. And this may be subject to some change about the time, but Christian's understanding is in 1969, because Billy had met Wendell in a couple locations with Eskett, he was taken forward to 1981 because the play had earned, and actually in this case, the Timmers, Eskett knew that the then top secret stealth would be test flown. And he was taken to the Groom Lake area and placed down, hid somewhere miraculously because as it's also said by Eskett and Patel, had they seen him, because that place is heavily guarded, they would have shot him on sight. There would have been no questions. Boy, you'd be dead. Instead, he hides out and successfully takes nine photos of the stealth interacting, right? with Askett's craft. Kodak authenticates it. Jaime Masson has done two videos at least exploring the movement of the craft from the photos and another expert down there who did different enhancements showing it's a real interaction. So then Melissa Osaki, who is the webmaster of the site, along with Charles Van Loon and Matt Knight, do further research examining these photos and what they found is, and this is mind-boggling, that stealth that only looks like a black plane in these photos when they are really enlarging and enhancing, that stealth had camouflage on it. And here's the shoe that drops. There was only one of those objects from what we now know. It had the camera and it was flown by the original test pilot, Hal Farley, and apparently June 18th, 1981. And there's some more stuff that they're finding artifacts in these photos under high, you know, magnification. And Melissa then found, Hal Farley, had found his signed photos from that day and found a video of him flying that plane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important UFO evidence ever presented Yes, I've tried to send it around to government officials and everything else. And as of this moment, right now, no responses. It's suppressed completely. And I'm on UFO Twitter, was one of the places I dropped stuff. Not one UFO related person. No, there was one who said thank you. The rest won't talk about it. Nobody wants to reveal this because all these people suddenly they're unimportant, which they are anyhow, because none of them are investigators, real researchers. You know, their cash cows are gold. Michael, that is absolutely amazing. That is what a gift you've brought to the Billy Meyer case in, as far as documentation. My gosh. I opened that door, but, you know, Wendell did it. I got to open the door, and then Melissa and the team, they subsequently, in, in the latest blog, as of yesterday, they put out more documentation, emails between them and aviation experts. You see, I asked Melissa and the team, I said, find some aviation experts and send them the photos without the UFO in it. Ask them. 
because I didn't want anybody to be blown away or intimidated by something they wouldn't want to talk about. So, right? And they write back, well, yeah, it's a stealth, and it's a stealth, and it's a stealth all over the place. It's the stealth, and here's the other shoe, folks. The UFOs in there. This is the key to our future survival. And these people are two things, if nothing else. They are non-invasive and non-inflicted. They are not going to come and solve it for us. They're not here to invade us or harm us or anything else. And they're brilliant beyond our levels of brilliance. They understand us. They're not trying to force us. They're giving us things that any reasonably intelligent person, you don't have to be a scientist, can vet, can reason their way through and conclude quite logically and obviously, wait a minute, this guy couldn't hoax this. This information is unknown. This evidence is authentic. What are they trying to tell us? And that's when we're going, yes, yes, please, read. Billy's the first person to learn about the, you know, the climate change and all this stuff. But in terms of photographic evidence, along with all the remaining of his 1,200 plus photos and, and films and video, what do people want? Here it is. And these, and I sent links off to all these aviation uh, sites on Twitter and to scientists. So far, their lips are sealed because why? Nobody's writing back saying it's a hoax, you've hoaxed the photos. They all know it's real. And they're afraid of it. It's about time we wind this up. Uh, one more time, uh, where can people find links uh, to this photo uh, of Ascot's ship and the, uh, and the stealth fighter? Sure. Everything is at theyflyblog.com. Theyflyblog.com. And, they, yeah. and the original website where also the original shop is, is theyfly.com. And I do answer all questions. But since we have an interactive blog, people can ask, challenge, and question freely on the blog. There's almost 1,600 blogs by now. And while I've written most of them, we have submissions from two writers in Germany and uh, with webmaster Melissa and the other guys that are contributing and it's centered around this information so my gosh please it's free come, come on down. okay great well Michael I know you're really busy and I just want to thank you one more time so much for uh, spending some time with the Billy Meyer books channel uh, it's really grateful and Boy, what a great shoe you dropped at the end here with these brand new photos of Ascot's ship. Uh, I've never seen them before. So to, to get them uh, out in the open in the public and for you to go find them, what a great service. So thank you for all the time and all the things you've done over the years uh, in spreading the word about the Bailey Mayer case. We appreciate it, and we certainly appreciate your time today. Likewise, and thank you, Mike. Salome. <laughs>